Hey guys, I thought I would just do a video on how to set up an enclosure for isopods. So, you're going to need a tub. You can use a variety of sizes of tubs. You could keep a lot of isopods in there. But I'm going to start off with just 10 or 20. So I'm heating up a knife and then I'm just putting some little slits in the top. You could do this with a drill or something and then get mesh. And put mesh over the holes to stop any gnats and things like that from being able to enter the enclosure and also stop babies escaping but I've had success to be honest just with this by putting tiny holes in the very roof away from the sides so that's step one just get loads of holes in the lid because isopods like to have plenty of fresh air if you push too hard and the knife's not hot enough it will just split the lid so there we go we've just got some holes in our lid so seven litre tubs great for a colony and you could keep you could get hundreds of isopods in here but that gives you the, if you put 15 in there it gives you plenty of time for them to breed and grow so I've half filled it now with soil um, you can use any soil but probably better to use soil that hasn't got too much added fertilizer you definitely don't want the stuff with the balls of fertilizer in it this does have John Inns in it, which uh, includes loam and sand, which is good for isopods. But if you do use John Inns, make sure you use number one, uh, because as you go higher up, they get higher levels of fertilizer. But some fertilizer I've read can be beneficial for the isopods, and they actually use it themselves, but too much can't be good. Now I'm going to add some leaves from my store actually. Uh, these ones have been boiled to get rid of any slugs or mites or anything like that. Um, so I'm just going to basically make a whole layer of leaves on the bottom of my tub now. Right, that should be plenty of leaves and you can see I've got lots left. I could do probably four, four more or something out of that bag. So that's not bad at all. I boiled them so there won't be any slugs or mites or anything like that that could harm the pods. So yeah, the next thing you want to do is add the moss. So here's some moss. I do sell moss in my store. <clears throat> this is particularly good moss. Very long strands. Some of it's very green and you can see it's actually sphagnum. I do have sheet moss as well. But that I just use for uh, packing the pods. When I'm holding them, I actually use sphagnum. But you could just use sheet moss. Just try and make sure that there's no pests or anything in it. So we're going to put a layer of moss on there. So just give them the moisture. Obviously, we're going to have to be careful because if that's touching the lid, the babies can easily climb out through the hole. So we're going to have to make sure we're clearing the lid. But that's ready now just to have a bit of bark added to it. If you don't have bark or you don't want to use the bark and microwave it and risk killing bugs and everything like that, you could use like toilet paper tubes, cardboard, stuff like that. I just prefer to use bark because it replicates their natural environment. But yeah, I'm, going, I'm giving this a real good spray because remember we've got a deep layer of substrate so a lot of this water will be soaked up. But at the same time, you don't want it waterlogged. We just want it to be like the forest floor. The humidity of the isopod only has to be in the substrate, unlike other invertebrates and stuff where, or lizards, where you want the air humidity. These guys, if the, if the air is dry, they can still survive as long as they can find a leaf or something like that that's got moisture underneath it. There's not really a need to have a hydrometer in, the, in every isopod tub and it would be a bit unrealistic to do that. So you just need to make sure basically that they're always moist, at least on one side. Some people, depending on the species especially as well, you might want to sort of have your moss like I've done here, sort of, you know, so you've got a dry area over here that will dry out a bit more and then the moss which will keep it all moist in here so that the pods can sort of self-regulate their humidity that way as well. So here's some back which I was going to use, um, what you can do is get any back and microwave it just to kill off any bugs so that it's not contaminated. 
Now I was just going to shake off the bugs, but as you can see there's actually baby isopods on there. Um, so I'm not going to use that and microwave my baby isopods, but I'll have to go and get some more bark. I found some bark out on a walk and I've run hot water over it to get rid of any insects and I'm just microwaving it now on some paper towels. You only really have to do it for two minutes, but I'm doing it for about four minutes because I did run it run water over it beforehand so now I'm just going to add some of this sterile back to the tub and as you can see there's no bugs or anything crawling around on that anymore so There we go guys, and I can feel now that the substrate's absorbed all the water I put in earlier so I can just give it a little spray again. So I've put a lid on now, which is when I'm just going to, as you can see, there's nothing touching the lid. So there's nothing for the baby pods to climb up onto which would give them easy access to the air holes. You don't even need air holes per se, you could just take the lid off for a minute every day to let fresh air in. Online there's varying opinions on it and so a lot of people say that they don't like stagnant air so it's best to have some kind of ventilation and a lot of people say to put some holes on the side of the tub. If you did do that I would you definitely will need to have a mesh or something to stop the babies escaping however from my experience breeding these you're fine just to have some holes on the top and in fact I've kept them without uh, without any air holes just fine as well and I've had a lot of success in glass tanks. I, I think this is a very good way of doing it because then I don't have to use a mesh. Um, and I've not had any escapees this way so far. So it allows the gas exchange. And then obviously when I'm spraying it, that lets some air in as well. See there, I've just put on the side of the tub, I've put the name of the pod, a little picture of the pod, and also the year and month that I've got this col this um this pod so I know how old this colony is and it will help me keep track of cleaning it and stuff I would just clean as needed I wouldn't go off of a certain schedule because if you have less pods they need cleaning less often if you label the side it means if you stack them on top of each other you'll always know what's inside them where if you put it on top of the lid and put another one on top you would have to lift them to see what the pod was inside Anyway, I've set up another one now for these blue prenosis. Here's some P prenosis powder blue. I've set up an enclosure for them. Exactly the same as the other one, got the holes in the lid. Uh, making sure that they can't easily get to the centre of the lid where the holes are. We're just going to pour them in. I don't see any, but sometimes when you buy pods, you'll get some springtails with them, which is obviously not a bad thing at all. They'll do the same job as the uh, isopods, will it clean in the soil and everything, and outcompete any mites or gnats that you might have. So, yeah, I, I won't be worried if I see any springtails. Anyway, that's them in there now. And that's it.